Oppo's newest smartphone looks to take the best of the past and bring it into the present. Hey, it's Joshua Gar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Oppo Find 7 in this first look. As should be evidenced by the usage of the Find name, this is an update to the original Find 5 that was also a bit of a trailblazer in its own right, as it was one of the first phones to come with a 1080p resolution display. That tradition continues here on the Find 7, as it comes with an industry-first 1440p display, not called 2K by the company, but instead Quad HD. But before we get into the absolutely jaw-dropping screen, let's talk about the design. The design of the Find 7 follows heavily from the language originally started in the Find 5, which is a wonderfully constructed body with steel elements. In the Find 7, the first thing that was noticed was a much better balanced weight distribution, as while the Find 7 comes a little bit heavier than its predecessor, it feels much nimbler in the hands than we would have expected. The black slate front has the 5.5 inch screen with capacitive keys on the bottom, accompanied underneath by a very attractive LED notification light called the Skyline Notification Light. The shine goes from the very middle of the area and permeates in a curve through throughout the bottom of the phone. The button layout takes on the power button on the left with the volume rockers on the right, another returning feature from the Find 5, and at first the uncommon layout does take a little getting used to. Coming around the back, you will notice that there are two different backs in this video as the phone comes in two different versions. Called the Find 7A, or Lite, uh, there's a version that sports a 1080p FHD display instead and includes somewhat lower specifications that will have a brushed backing that does feel quite nice but is a bit slippery to the touch. The version sporting the Quad HD display instead has a carbon fiber backing that definitely feels more secure in the hand and has an attractive textured pattern. Either version will make for a phone that looks absolutely great, even more so in the white version if that is your preference. Now, 5.5 inches isn't quite a common size for a phone screen, as phone manufacturers are starting to stretch the limits of 5-inch form factors with 5.1 and 5.2-inch offerings nowadays. And then you have the larger phablet space that can range from 5.7 to the 6.4. Instead, Oppo went for the middle route and thus has a phone that does have a 5.5-inch screen but has the general size of a Samsung Galaxy Note 3. The result is a phone that is right on the line of discomfort when using one-handed. It's nowhere near the discomfort of a full-size its phablet and its form factor, we believe, will gradually feel normal to most users. Though the sides are rather thin, the flatness allows for a good enough grip that things never get out of hand. The screen is one of the biggest stories here with its 2K or Quad HD resolution, coming in at 2560 by 1440 and has the highest pixel density of any device in the world currently at 534 pixels per inch, thus bringing the first display experience of its kind. You can go to AndroidAuthority.com and see our examples of the differences between this and 1080p resolution screens, which all lead to the same conclusion. The Find 7 is incredibly sharp. But while under a microscope, it might be easier to see how much more packed the pixel are, uh, to the general user's eye, it's a certainty, thus, that the viewing experience will be highly enjoyable. Oppo is really showing their display pedigree with the Find 7, and it was honestly one of the most photogenic screens I have had the pleasure to film and photograph. If you already have a great time with 1080p displays, then that will simply just continue here with Oppo's latest. But once again, remember to head to AndroidAuthority.com for an even closer look. Underneath the hood, we get different versions of the Find 7 once again, as the 1080p phone will come with the Snapdragon 800, and the Quad HD Performer will sport the Snapdragon 801 and 3GB of RAM. The Color OS, while not necessarily considered minimalistic in its feature set, actually flew by very smoothly in either version we tested, making this phone sit among its competition in terms of sheer performance. For the most part, the only thing really hindering our speedy experience on the Find 7 was having to hold down the home button to access the recent app screen. And in terms of hardware, Oppo wanted to step their game up even further by offering expandable storage underneath that removable back. And as far as connectivity goes, this is the first Oppo smartphone to handle LTE connections as it will be made available in every market's version of the phone. That's a big deal for anyone otherwise sick of Oppo's HSDPA connectivity available on previous offerings. But the biggest story in hardware here is definitely in regards to the battery. 3000 mAh might sound pretty normal for the 1440p phone, but Oppo has a built-in a technology allowing for what is called multi-step constant current charging. Now that all sounds like technical talk, but here's the gist. Oppo claims that the phone can go from 0 to 75% battery life in half an hour. Bottom line is, you're looking at the best-in-class charging speeds of any smartphone. We're excited to put it to the test, but in the end, faster charging time is an exciting prospect indeed.
Moving into the camera, we have a 13 megapixel optic package powered by the latest generation Sony Exmor RS sensor. The result is a photography experience that is greatly enhanced but still feels pretty familiar. The app is very much the same color OS app from the N1 that includes a lot of different options for your photography experience, including some surprises like the ability to shoot in raw format, as well as a few returning features like a slow shutter capture. I turned on the touch to capture feature and found the app very snappy, getting its focus point very quickly and then going Going from shutter to file in very little time. And during our first glance, the pictures all looked quite nice, but our full review will really put it through its paces, so stay tuned for that. And finally, we'll talk about the software as we have the Color OS that returns from the Oppo N1. While we were told the new version of this operating system is definitely on its way, the Color OS is already pretty feature packed from the top down. On the home screens, there are the live media widgets for extra fun. Despite some interesting shape choices here and there, the general experience is what you would expect, especially with the Color OS being one of the few Asian user interfaces that still uses an app drawer. Dive deeper into the experience, however, and you'll be sure to find plenty of little gems that range from gimmicky to incredibly useful. The useful features include the gesture panel that will that you can bring down by sliding from the left of the drop down and in there you can draw any number of programmable gestures to perform a bunch of different tasks. These can actually be triggered while in standby mode as well. Double tapping the home button can then turn off and wake up the phone, which was another highlight. But the more gimmicky features are still really cool, like the sky gestures, which can be triggered by holding the volume button down and then moving the phone about in a certain pattern to turn it, the camera, or the torch on. Overall, the rather ethereal look of the Color OS returns, but it is really only a cover of an otherwise very feature-heavy and actually incredibly thoughtful experience found underneath. The Oppo Find 7 will go on sale very soon on their website for various markets under the prices of $499 for the 1080p resolution version and then $599 for the Quad HD version. And so, there you have it, the Oppo Find 7 in this pretty extended first look. We spent quite a bit of time with the phone and the wonderful people over at Oppo, and there is really one thing for certain after our time with it. We can't wait to get our hands on it for an even more in-depth review. Reporting from the launch event in Beijing, China, this is Joshua Vigar from Android Authority. Stay tuned for more coverage of the Oppo Find 7 here at your source for all things Android.